You're sociable, you like people, so why do you think that you're better off alone? Animals are more reliable than humans, right? They're predictable, you know what you're going to get. So why is it humans are a different story? They make you feel nervous, although you want to connect. You want to be emotionally intimate, but who can you really trust? In this episode, we're looking at resolving when you think you're better off alone. And we're looking at alone patterns, who chases people out, and accepting love. So to begin, you first need to recognize alone patterns and where they came from. Alone patterns are where you feel inwardly alone, even if you're surrounded by people. They often come from early in life, these patterns. Consider, as an example, if you were allowed in early life to freely explore and express feelings, whether that was something that just kind of happened and was encouraged, or if you were nervous to have your own identity, your own thing going on, because you had a fear what other people's reactions would be. And maybe that's translated into your life now. Maybe you worry a lot about what other people think. Whether people in your life were inconsistent, perhaps in your early life, that's what happened. You were never quite sure whether you were gonna get the same thing, the same mood, the same way of looking at something twice. If you were nervous, of what mood other people would be in and you believed other people's moods changed quite a bit was some, and those mood changes were somehow your fault. If you felt separated from your own identity or you struggle right now to know what you really want, all of those are signs of alone patterns where you want to feel connection but you think ah do you know what i think i'm better off alone so who chases people out what does that look like well who chases people out are those who are emotionally immature emotionally immature people will come in all forms and are very common in life. These are people who shy away from emotional intimacy. And what does emotional intimacy mean? Does it mean physical intimacy? No, emotional intimacy means truth of an emotional connection. And you know those people who shy away from that. As an example, it's the father who hid behind reading the paper. The partner who was all over you keen at the beginning and then ducked out on you with no real explanation. Those who can never apologize even when they've done something completely out of order. People who have said you've overreacted for calling them out on something that's happened or they've done or called you too sensitive. You know what, you've overreacted and you're just too sensitive. Mm, am I? Or have I just called you out on something? And you feel spontaneous feelings around them when you feel s- spontaneous feelings, something exciting, something new around them, anything that feels spontaneous or spontaneous upset or something that's just happened that you feel around them, those spontaneous feelings are somehow shameful and that they kind of shuffle away from them. They shuffle away from an intensity of emotion, whether that's sadness, happiness, excitement. They have to be the center of attention, no matter what. 
So emotionally immature people bring everything back round to themselves. They find it hard to really emotionally connect, but they'll talk forever if it's about themselves or they will move everything back to that. And you feel silent. When you've tried to connect with these people and you've tried, and you have tried, they've chased you out. They've chased you out emotionally. You felt not only hurt, but rejected. You've thought, do you know what? I'm just trying to connect with you, but you've just chased me out. And you felt not only hurt, as I say, but rejected as though looking for connection is somehow really wrong. Such experiences make it hard for you to trust again. Why would you? Each time you try and put yourself out there. And it kind of feels icky to people. Why would you trust? You find it hard to trust again. And you think, do you know what? I'm better off alone. So how do you change that? How do you accept love? Well, you do so by allowing any of your own emotional immaturity to move to mature emotional position, to a mature emotional position. And emotional maturity happens when you allow yourself introspection and inner work. When you own your responsibility, but not the responsibility of others. When you own your own responsibility, not that of others. You move to the space of observing rather than absorbing. When you do that, you take responsibility for your own and not responsibility for other people's. You move to that space of being able to observe rather than absorb somehow your fault. The more you feel comfortable with this, the more you feel it's safe to connect because whilst you're absorbing everybody else's emotions, of course, that's overwhelming. And you're going to feel, do you know what? I'm better off alone. So the more you feel comfortable with observing those rather than absorbing them, the more you feel safe to connect because you're not expecting fulfillment to be the responsibility of the outside world as in somebody else. So what are the steps you can take to step out of aloneness? What I found I got sucked into for a long time was believing that I had to be resentful of other people's inadequacy, that I had to be resentful of their inadequacy in terms of allowing themselves to be emotionally intimate and connect with people. For you as an intuitive sensitive, you're going to be someone who is more of an inward person. Doesn't mean that you you retreat. You are more of a reflective person. You think about things from the inside. Whereas you're used to people who just expect the outside world to somehow entertain them. So I got sucked into believing that I had to be resentful of that, other people's inadequacy of, of not being able to be emotionally connected. It's not true. You don't have to be resentful. And you, at the same time, you don't have to forgive. If someone has wronged you, it's painful. I found out the quickest route out of that was to, was not to assign blame, but to own the pain, to own my own pain around that. And once I did that, it was much easier, much easier to see clearly and to realize I didn't have to lick wounds alone. Emotional maturity required a state of empathy and self-awareness. And that is an impossibility. If I was looking to assign blame and wallow in my victim. So I decided to take charge 
of what I wanted rather than expect someone else to spontaneously provide it or wait for it or wait for those kind of little scraps of something. And that left room for genuine connection. I get it. It feels much easier to be alone when you're developing a higher sense of emotional maturity for yourself, as in your inner world in attraction, that you're attracted to developing that inner world. And you're developing that higher sense of emotional maturity. And you think, well, once you're going through that, I get it. You feel it's better off, better off to be alone because you seem to be surrounded. There's this whole feeling of being surrounded by emotionally immature people. That changes though. That really changes as you make changes. So what are the three little things you can do to move out of aloneness? Well, the first thing is own your feelings. You do this and you'll discover your emotional needs, okay? And discovering your, your emotional needs is your first step out of aloneness because you actually know what your emotional needs are. Number two, one, two, one, two. Number two is observe others' emotional immaturity rather than absorb it as your fault. It's tempting to analyze why someone rejects. I get that. But if you observe, you'll see their fear of emotional intimacy has nothing to do with you. It's not your fault. It's just their thing. Emotional mature people will communicate, okay, what the issue is. So when someone is emotionally mature, you think, well, how do I know when someone's emotionally immature and when someone's emotionally immature? Emotionally mature people will communicate what the issue is and they'll do that kindly. They don't have to hurt you over it. It's just, you know, a normal part of a conversation to establish a relationship and the depth of that and to resolve any misunderstanding. Emotionally mature people communicate. Okay, so that's the difference. Number three. Realize soul relationships, soul relationships. What do I mean by that? Where there's a depth of connection, it feels like someone's talking to my soul. Everyone understands that as a concept, whether you're religious or spiritual, you, you understand that as a concept. Everyone gets that because they can feel that there's this different, deeper part to themselves. Realize that soul relationships start with yourself. They start with yourself. And they lead you to your sense of true self, your true identity, who you really are. It will take a few goes, but you will feel that you can move out of aloneness. Okay, it's not about perfect, it's about progress. Would you like me to help you more with that? The meditation, the free meditation accompanying this episode will fast track, fast track you out of this aloneness into that sense of your own emotional maturity. So give the soul directed relationships meditation a go. Do it now, right now, because you don't make logical decisions around aloneness. Okay, you don't make logical decisions around that. You make illogical decisions based on unwanted unconscious beliefs, which have often been stored in the body for years. As Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. This meditation will help you undo those unwanted unconscious beliefs like that. And it does that by releasing the energy stored in your body, in your unconscious. Even if you've never done a meditation before, it's fine. Just follow the words and see where it takes you. You have time. There is always time 
for something this important. Okay, so now we've focused on that and you've focused on moving out of aloneness. What's the next issue? You know, what, what happens next? Well, it becomes, can you trust happiness? It's like, wow, is this connection or is this not connection? How can I trust happiness? Because when you've been on the been on the receiving end of feeling aloneness is the safest option. It's easy to slip into not trusting. But because you deserve access to your best self, it's time to trust happiness. So guess what the next episode does? It addresses how to do that, how to trust happiness. So make sure you set a reminder now to join me for the next session, which I release on Saturday at 4 p.m. UK time. And I will then be in the comments for an hour from 4.30 p.m. for you to place in what you've got from your meditation, for me to interpret whatever it you want me to interpret as far as that's concerned. If you think, wow, what does this mean? Put it in and I will answer. Share this episode. If you know someone who feels it is safer to be alone, even though they're very sociable, they just feel, do you know what? I don't know who, you know, I've really tried and mm. those kind of people where you think that this would really help them because it would resonate with them because they're people like you, it's resonated with you. And you think, wow, I think this would be really helpful for this person. Feel free to share it, but don't force it on people who are not ready. And definitely do not force it upon the emotionally immature because they will bite you for this. Okay. So share it with people that you feel, wow, I'm building something with because they'll feel that you did them a major, massive favor. It will highlight these things. I remember when I was in that space and I remember, wow, that would have been nice to have had something like that at that particular time. And if you share it with them, they'll be very pleased that you did. So go now and listen to the free meditation, Soul Directed Relationships. And if you don't already have access, to, you can download a copy for free from HeidiSawyer.com forward slash the number six. Okay, not the word, but the number six. So HeidiSawyer.com forward slash number six, just the number six. Okay, do that now. Join me for the comments section. Tell me what you, you got in your meditation and if there is anything that you want um, my help with interpreting. And do that now, that meditation now. And then you're not allowing the limitation of perfection. Oh, it has to, oh, it's not the right time. I have to be quiet. I have to do this. There's a limitation of perfection. Don't allow that to get in your way. Do it now. We believe your capacity for empathy gives you a unique perspective. The way we help you access your uniqueness is through developing your intuition, your, in, your inner world. When you allow this part of you, life is easy. So go now, listen to the very powerful meditation and always remember this, your sensitivity is your greatest asset. Until next time, bye for now.